Hearing aids do not correct hearing loss. They amplify sounds and they shape uncomfortably sounds. They try to make sounds audible without being uncomfortably loud. Um, they, they amplify sounds. They don't fix a damaged cochlea or a damaged auditory nerve, but the technology has come a long way and there are many things that hearing aids can do that they used to not be able to do. The best type of hearing aid for a child is the behind the ear hearing aid. There's also in the ear hearing aid and completely in the canal, but those aren't suitable for children. Behind the ear hearing aids, um, there are also body worn hearing aids, but these aren't generally used anymore, not with our better technology and cochlear implants. So behind the ear hearing aids are what you see in the upper left hand corner. They're big, they're strong, they're powerful and they're durable, so they're great for kids. Then you have in the ear and in the canal, but really behind the ear hearing aids are what it's all about, especially when we're working with kids. So behind the ear hearing aids can grow with the child. Um, I remember when I was little, I had glasses and I was always breaking my glasses because I was, you know, four years old. So they're durable, they're, you don't have to worry about this very expensive technology um, easily breaking. So first things first, we diagnose the hearing loss. Then we get the kids the proper equipment that they need to hear as best they can. And when I go back to that one, three, six model, by six months, the child should have hearing aids. So there should be this trial period of hearing aids. Even if the parents are going to go through with the cochlear implant, there's still a time period between when the surgery happens and diagnosis. And in that time, you get the child a hearing aid. There's no time to wait. The more any access to sound, the better. It's hard to obtain a good fit with infants. Um, challenges include parental acceptance of an infant's hearing loss. I have um, one of my husband's friends, their daughter, their infant had cancer. And the cancer, uh, the drugs that she had to take to cure her cancer, which she did do, took away her hearing. And um, I know the mom had a hard time with the girl wearing hearing aids and cochlear implants, you know, because it's different and it's unexpected. But, you know, they, they did it. They did what's best for their child. So um, the kids had these soft, pliable ears that sometimes the hearing aids could fall off. So when they fall off, you just kind of like casually put them right back on the infants. And we make sure that they, um, they're always wearing them. And as part of our early intervention, they should be free. There's no cost to the parents. We really want the kids to have their hearing aids working at all times. Hearing aids are digital, they're flexible, they're precise, they fit the child's hearing aid. They have advanced signal processing techniques that adjust the amount of amplification or the gain that the child gets. Some frequencies they don't need amplification, so if they have good hearing in the low frequencies, the hearing aids won't amplify low frequencies. Um, if they need more help in the high frequencies, they'll get more help in the high frequencies. Hearing aids also have compression circuitry, which means they don't let loud sounds get uncomfortably loud. So soft sounds get the most amplification, moderate sounds get some amplification, and loud sounds will get no amplification, right? Because the loud sounds are already loud. We don't need them to be made louder. They're frequency specific. They could fit different environments, so there could be a setting for a quiet environment and a setting for a loud environment. They have noise reduction capabilities where only speech sounds with the complex wave patterns get amplified and background noise that's a mess doesn't get amplified. There are different ways to measure whether or not they're working and if they're effective. And the audiologist can track how long they're being worn. And remember, hearing aids should be worn, cochlear implants from the moment the infant wakes up until the moment they go to bed. And unfortunately, a lot of the responsibility falls on the parents to make sure those kids always have their hearing aids on. These hearing aids are also compatible with FM systems. They're bootable, so you can directly clip on 
an FM system to the hearing aid and the cochlear implant too are bootable. So you'll see this if you go into schools for children who are deaf. They, um, they'll have their cochlear implant and it'll be like extended a bit longer with their like half inch FM boot attached to the bottom of the hearing aid or the cochlear implant. Always two hearing aids. If, if a child has a bilateral hearing loss, you need to have two hearing aids. Should it always be worn at all times. When you're working, um, if you're doing a therapy session with a child that has a hearing aid, before you even start, take the hearing aid and cup it in your hands or cup your hand over their ear. There should be a whistle. A whistle means that it's working. If it's not working, check the battery. Make sure it's clean. Notify the audiologist of the school or the parent that the device isn't working. And look at how sad this is. About 50% of hearing aids checked in school programs are found to be malfunctioning at any given time. That's awful. What's the point of having it if it's not working correctly? So before you spend, you know, 30, 45 minutes working with that child, make sure their devices are working correctly so that you don't waste any time. Battery problems. Just make sure the batteries are, that's probably the number one culprit that the battery is expired or dead. Hearing aids these days, um, to get rid of that visual stigma they have, they could be bright colors or hot pink. People put stickers on their cochlear implants. If you go to any ASHA convention, there'll be a cochlear implant vendor or an uh, audiology um, convention, and you'll see they'll sell the stickers and the decals, anything to make it fun or cool, just so the child feels more comfortable wearing their device. There are also bone anchored hearing aids. These are for children that have severe conductive or mixed hearing loss. With a bone anchored hearing loss, a bone anchored hearing aid, the hearing aid goes directly to the mastoid bone and it vibrates the fluid of the cochlea. So it skips the outer and middle ear. 